We're here. We're here. That's right. We want to thank you and welcome you for being a part of our Central Rec Fantasy Football League. This is our fourth year in a row of doing it. We had 50 players, men and women, all over uh, five different leagues. Um, you know, I use sometimes my children to ask who should I pick, whatever it is that you use to figure out who needs to start and not start. But um, it's been exciting, man. I can't, I mean, I'm excited about getting to who's done what. Uh, maybe make fun a little bit of a few people and uh, and give props to those who also need to be credited for a good season as well too. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. But before we get to that, let's take a quick commercial break. Welcome back. We really appreciate all the, the great sponsors that we have uh, here for this Fantasy Football League. Uh, well, we want to get started uh, with some certificates uh, for the best team name. Names are special, and for the best team name out of all five leagues goes to Richard Porter with Staying in Mahomes. Yes, we good love job. team names, and we appreciate it when a good one comes out there. So yes. Good job, Richard. Good yes, job. good job. Speaking of best team names, now we have worst team names. And this year, out of all five leagues, the worst team name is anybody with the word team in front of your name. So, do better, guys. Do Next better. year, we expect more, a lot more. Yes. All right, so um, like each week, regular season especially, we have those one guy that stands out. Well, this year, the top game score of the regular season was done by Team Bird. Okay, speaking of worst team names, by the way. Team Bird with 204.58 points in one week, folks. What a stinking good week that was. Team Bird, I think, killed it. He actually, I think he maybe going 11, 12, and 0 before he finally lost one, uh, something like that. And then he went undefeated for a while. Then, man, brings us up to the upset of the year. Uh, the upset of the year is that Team Bird, like I said, was undefeated until the last couple weeks, maybe. It went into the championship, our semifinals, and we went to the semifinals. Man, it was it was a big matchup, okay? Was. People were expecting him to win in his group, and he got upset by the number four seed, Team Stack, in a two-week span, 278.62 to 276.98. Okay, that was Central Rec 4.2. Wow, what an unbelievable game. It was a point and a half over two weeks. And the team that was dominating most of the year, number four seed, Team Stack, came in and took care of business. Man, that's awesome. Good job. Now we have some stats I want to be able to give you over the five leagues. And you all don't get to see everything, but we get to come back and see all the different stats. Uh, one of them is the top combined game score um, during the regular season. Man, these are two teams that were Titans battling it out. In um, Central Rec 4.2, you know, 351.48 points total over that one game. I mean, these guys were high score and battling it out. That was Steven Bird and Brandon Sprague who were battling against each other. I Man, good stuff. We also have the lowest combined score. These are the ones that it was basically a yawn fest. <laughs> yawn fest that these guys were playing even. Um, it was 119.54 was their combined score. Okay. 73.94 or 45.6. That's it. All right, Scotty Watson and Brian Lyles. Next time, we need a little more excitement in that week because that was that was a rough week for all of us, man. You look at these? Sure. All right, so most waiver wire trades. So pretty much waiver wire trade is players that are available, right? Mm -hmm. You know? So this year goes to Thad Green. Man, he was working the system trying to get his Crazy. team going. He didn't make the playoffs. So he did. Yeah, he did really well. So yeah. the waiver wire works. So it works. Use it. it. Works. Use it. Uh, the next one is the closest game scored. So the closest game was between Rustin Evan and Evan Thomas. Uh, the score was 119.3 to 118.9. Dude, that was point four point separation. Four. My goodness, what a close game that was. Speaking of a close game, how about a word from our sponsor? We Have fun, buddy. Wee! <laughs> We want to welcome you back with our little break from our sponsors. Um, 
we want to talk about real quick, there's always that person who says they're committed at the beginning of the season, but then something goes wrong and they're not. So to this year's Dead Fish Uncommitted Owner Award goes to Noah Lyles. Uh, your league responsibilities didn't end when a player gets hurt. Okay, let's put a little more effort in there next year. Noah Lyles, come on now. Do better, kid. Yeah. Yes, please. Also, um, you know, earlier we had Thad who had the most um, waiver wires. Blew everybody out, by the way. Uh, this one, we have the least waiver wires. There were two people who did not take advantage, and their uh, record showed that they needed to take advantage of the waiver wire, okay? These two guys were Rustin Evitt and Roger Whitehouse, and they literally used the waiver wire zero times. Zero times. Zero. That is just sad. Yes. Speaking of sad, the next award that we give, I guess you can say award, is the Pay Up Maybe. Award, okay? So this year, the Pay Up Award it goes to How Great We Aren't, Ergo, Bruce tracks. Ooh, Bruce. Come on, Bruce. So pretty much, in all seriousness aside, could you please pay your lead dues? Uh, because we had to watch you play. Yes. By the way, there, this was a free league. Oh, yeah. And so yeah. we're asking Bruce to give us money for his participation because he struggled and we struggled watching. So just yes. wanted to get you know, it's kind of like his Steelers in the playoffs. Uh, it might be too soon. Sorry about that, Bruce. Uh, yeah. Way to give up. Yeah. All right, the next is the Crybaby Award, okay? <laughs> I, I love this, I love this award. This should be a different um, name, by the way. Not a Crybaby. Definitely Crybaby. So the Crybaby Award this year goes to Marty Hogshead. No, no, it was Marty one of the unfortunate things went against so, me. So the reason, if you can't tell, uh, he's a little upset about this year. Um, yes, you know. I went from top dog to everything went wrong this year. Everything, not just my players, everything. This is my little baby violin. Baby violin. Baby violin. Yeah. So, Crybaby Award, Marty Holmes. Yeah. Uh, man, we have the You Crushed It Award. The You Crushed It Award was Haley White, biggest beatdown of season. She won 169.52 to 59.32. She won by 110.2 points, more than her opponent. Man, great wow. job, Haley. That's Good awesome. Job. Um, now, on the other end of the spectrum, we had the Skunk of the Week, and the Skunk of the Week was Will Browderman. He put up a whopping 41.32 points in one full weekend. Wow. Got to work on that for next time. Come on, Will. Next, we have the Toilet Bowl Champion. Okay, this person played in the bottom bowl, uh, the bottom of the barrel of his league, uh, but he won. So, the Toilet Bowl Champion is Team Venom, Jimmy Venom. Uh, played for last place and won. So, golf for last. Golf for being last. second to last is significant, significantly better than last. Congrats on your big win. Good job, Jimmy. Good job, Jimmy. Not really. Last but not least, uh, most points against in one full season. Uh, we have Jason Foster. Jason, man. Uh, Jason had 2,256.72 points against him. So that means while we played him, we did our best against him. That league dominated his team, at least put up a lot of points. There. Poor guy. Scoring leader this year was Drew Elgersma with Space Monkey Mafia. Uh, scored 2,528.34 points. Man, he killed it. Man, he was on fire all year. Obviously, his points showed that. Average like 168 points a week. Something. Yeah, dominated, man. Dominated um, on his in his league. Come on, guys. And everybody else in that league, you got to step up next time. We can't let him have that. Um, also, we have the overall best record. Anybody who finished 11-4, and four, that means they um, finished that counting the playoffs. That's the entire playoffs and regular season. 11-4. There are several people. We won't mention them, but 11-4, you know if you had that record. Um, also, the worst record overall goes to Roger Whitehouse at 1-14. So, come on, buddy. Next time, we gotta, we got to work on that, right? we got to work on that. All right. We want to thank um, all everybody again for participating, but we want to especially thank a few people for uh, putting in a little extra time and helping me out with different stats and things. Uh, it was our commissioners, our league commissioners. Um, and so, we want to thank... Um, Ray Pritchett, Stephen Bird, Mark Bomar, Drew Elgersma, and myself for being over the leagues that we needed. Those, that was very important. We appreciate that. Uh, with that, we have the competitive league. What was the most? Who was the most competitive? What across the board, from top to bottom, which league was the most competitive? And that competitive league goes to um, 1.2 Central Rec 1.2. That was also the one I ran, by the way. Yes. All right, and then we have the most creative names league. This is the one we appreciate. We love when you put the effort in. And so across the board, this league had the best, most, 
most creative names. And that goes to Drew Elgrithma's 2.2 group. Great job, Drew. Good job, Drew. So last, the Commissioner's Award goes to Central Rex 1.2, good old Marty Hollingshead, for having the best uh, league this year. Good job, Marty. I appreciate that. There were several factors that went into that. It wasn't just that, hey, we picked this. There were several factors across the board that came up with that. So thank you and Jordy. It was a lot of fun. You can do it! Hi, we're here with special guest. Surprise, you'll see who it is in just a moment. But we're to the section where we want to be able to tell you all of our winners and losers of each league. And then we have our nice special guest of the overall loser. But this special guest obviously can't be here with us today. Some of the times, you know, that's okay. They were a good sport. They allowed me to do some of this fun things we're getting ready to do, and they will do it in person too, I promise you. Yes. But we'll give you the five losers over the season. Uh, Mark Bastini, Evan Thomas, Noah Lyles, Russ Godwin, and Roger Whitehouse. These guys will get a nice little, it's not a trophy, it's a shaming. We expect you to display this this year until next year at your desk, your office, your mantle, wherever it is that people can see and understand this was not your year, okay? So this is a shaming, not a, an award, okay? All right, so now we have the overall fantasy loser, okay? So, so they will have a picture eventually taken of them, but right now we have this reveal. You wanna reveal the fantasy loser? Yes, so, drum roll please. <laughs> the fantasy loser of 2020 is Roger Whitehouse! Roger, Roger, man, you're a good sport. We appreciate you allowing us to put you on our Mr. Bean thing. But um, Roger couldn't be here today, but that's okay. But Roger will be ready to display his fantasy, I think, of fantasy football and wear his sash, this, you know, for a picture at least. So anyway, we appreciate you, and next year we expect better. All right, now we are back and we are being able to talk about what we've all been waiting for, the winner, the champions of the Central Reg Fantasy Football League. Well, we have five winners. We want to get to those first. Uh, we have Drew Blozier, Drew Elkersma, Ooh. Jacob Dellinger, ah. Brandon Spray, wow. and Will Jones. Congratulations on being the five winners over the league this year. You guys were awesome, did great. Man, we definitely want to give you kudos, and we are excited about how well you did. Um, unless they're the ones that beat me. Oh, yeah, it's everybody pretty much. So it's okay. It's all right. All right, so we have the five winners, and they're going to get a nice trophy. And Mark, you do the whole Dana White thing. Ooh, ah, that's great. So the little bobblehead trophy, and they'll have their league champion right there and what league they were in. So congratulations on that. But now we want to get to our special guest and one of the winners. Can we please have Mr. Why don't you just walk up here and everybody can see who you are. If they don't know you, we'll be tough. Ba -ba -da -da. Drew Elversma! Drew Elversma! Why don't we go ahead and so talk about the this champion. year, the overall champion of the 2020 fantasy football is the Drew Elversma. Yes, let's give him this nice he space gets monkey mafia. He gets a nice belt. The belt is back, people. The belt is back. Please hold that nice and dear. Right in the we middle. also have the trophy that stays in the rec center. Has his nice name on there now. We have the last four winners on here. Excellent job as yes. well. Yes, yes. Good stuff. And, and we just want to be able to say um, how excited we are about you, right? Yes. Everybody excited? We're very excited, so I'm very excited. <laughs> you with praise and glitter so we are very thankful for you being a part of this league and next year you're going down that's all i gotta <laughs> say now thank you again for being a part of this league we appreciate you get back to the super bowl and have some fun we'll talk to you later